Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you, Lars. 7.51, nine minutes before 8 o'clock at News Talk 820 WBAP here on the here on the uh, Tuesday morning. And the reason I am uh, hesitating here, there's word of a plane crashing into the World Trade Center in downtown uh, Manhattan. And the World Trade, a plane actually crashing and to the side of the World Trade Center. We're going to have details for you on that from ABC News in just a couple of moments as we get them to you. 7.52, it's eight minutes before 8 o'clock at WBAP. Former Senator. It's 7.54, six minutes before 8 o'clock at WBAP. Coming up in one minute, actually less than one minute, we're going to go live to ABC News in New York. Evidently, uh, in the last few moments, a plane has crashed into the World Trade Center in the upper the upper levels actually of the World Trade Center, upper stories of the World Trade Center. As uh, we're looking at pictures from CNN right now, we are going to get a live report from our colleagues in New York on ABC. John Pindolino joins us in the newsroom right now. John, any other information on the on this disaster? Well, first Special. of all, we, we got word of this about, uh, oh, I'd say about three minutes ago, mm -hmm. and ABC's Jim Hickey is preparing to go on the air live right now. As you indicated, CNN is reporting that a plane, don't know how big of an airplane, apparently hit the World Trade Center. With the latest in this special report, we go to New York City and ABC's Jim Hickey. This is a special report from ABC News. An airplane apparently has crashed into the upper levels of the World Trade Center in Lower Manhattan in New York. A tremendous amount of smoke is pouring from one of the twin towers of the World Trade Center. There appears to be a gaping hole about uh, a quarter of the way down from the top of the World Trade Center. Uh, we have an eyewitness who saw what happened, Joan Fleischer. I heard the plane very close to the top of the buildings. I looked outside and I saw a hit and it exploded immediately. The plane exploded uh, with a great deal of smoke. We're seeing a better picture now of the World Trade Center, one of the Twin Towers. There are, of course, two of them. A gaping hole in the upper levels of the World Trade Center. Flame and smoke pouring from the top of that building. No word yet on casualties. This just happened moments ago. A plane crash in the top of the World Trade Center in Lower Manhattan in New York. I'm Jim Hickey. This has been a special report from ABC News. And, of course, we will continue to bring the latest to you on this tragedy, an airplane crashing into the World Trade Center in New York City. Of course, Business Watch analyst Ray Hoffman is in New York City. He has looked out his window. And, Ray, tell us what you have seen yeah, John, I had to actually go down the hall because I looked the other direction, but I looked and, uh, I mean, you just see this billowing smoke from the north tower of the World Trade Center and uh, a, a very large hole and flames coming out from, I would say, something like the 78th, 80th floor, something like that. That's 107 stories on that particular building. And... Um, uh, you, you, your initial thought was that it had to be a bomb. Of course, then moments later we heard the reports about the airplane crashing in. And it makes perfect sense either way in terms of just the kind of gaping hole that you can see. You can see the, the fragments uh, against the side of the building. It's quite amazing, and uh, it uh, really is uh, right, the uh, smoke, huge. The smoke is getting uh, thicker and, and blacker as we speak, and obviously there's a... Uh, uh, a fire that's somewhat out of control up there right now. Um, and the hole on top of that building is humongous. It almost takes up the side of the World Trade Center. Yeah, that's what it seems like. And something that would concern me about this building, and this came up during the bombing issue, and I used to live right across the street, so I was well aware of this, uh, was the fact that uh, the World Trade Center Twin Towers were built as government buildings by the mm -hmm. Port Authority of New York and New Jersey and that meant that they did not have to put in quite as many stringent uh, safety uh, extras and uh, redundancies as right. a privately financed building. So it there could be more problems in terms of smoke and evacuation and so forth. And it looks like the impact was so hard that and actually the plane it looks like it went in on one side and parts of it came out well, on the other side of the World Trade Center also. Well, I remember that uh, I think it was a B-24 or something crashed right. into the uh, Empire State Building in the 40s. And a uh, similar thing, part of it came right. out the other side, I believe. Ray, what is around the base of the World Trade Center? What might debris have fallen on? 
Uh, around the base, first of all, you've got the two towers on the World Trade Center, and then you've got uh, uh, the West Side Highway, which is a, a four-lane road uh, divided by a parking lot area, and, uh, and side streets, and uh, commuters going through. There are a couple of pedestrian bridges that are sealed, uh, about the size of uh, railroad bridges, but very large. And uh, they're used for pedestrians going into the adjacent World Financial Center. So there are thousands and thousands of office workers. Merrill Lynch headquarters is right across the street. Uh, the, the Wall Street Journal headquarters right across the street. Lots of things there. And Ray, what, again, just prior to this crash, was there any indication about what type of aircraft this was? I know nothing about this other than what I uh, what I heard uh, just uh, just mm -hmm. in happenstance down the hall here on my way back to call you. So I can't tell you about that. Gosh, Dan, to look at that picture, it's got to be more than a, it looks like. It has to be more than a small Cessna. Now, of course, that's just me speculating, but that's that's a big hole in the side of the World Trade Center. Hole and the smoke billowing out over all of Manhattan. Ray Hoffman, thank you for your first hand mm -hmm. account. Uh, our Ray Hoffman live in Manhattan. Let's get the latest uh, from ABC News as obviously the whole focus of the day, maybe the week, has changed now after an aircraft of some type has crashed into one tower, the World Trade Center, according to uh, television reports. Again, we have no word on injuries. Been a huge explosion. Heavy smoke can be seen billowing from the building. Let's get the latest on this breaking story now from News Talk 820 WBAP, Fort Worth, Dallas, Dallas. It's 8 o'clock. From ABC News, I'm Doug Limerick. An incredible scene right now in New York City. A major disaster has occurred near the top of one of the World Trade Center towers in lower Manhattan. Apparently, a plane has crashed into the building. There's a gaping hole right now on the top of one of the twin towers, the World Trade Center. Joan Fleischer looking at the tower. I'm looking at the World Trade Center, and there's a huge hole in it, and there's a fire in the building. Fleischer also tells us... I heard the plane very close to the top of the buildings. I looked outside, and I saw it hit, and it exploded immediately. So a plane has crashed into the top of one of the twin towers in New York's World Trade Center. Still not sure what type of plane it was. You can see flames shooting out of the top of the World Trade Center. The South Tower, apparently, the one with the tall radio tower on it. Black billowing smoke over Manhattan. Again, a plane has crashed into one of the towers of the World Trade Center in Manhattan. That's all we know right now. Not sure what type of plane or casualties as yet. A grand jury in California has made a decision on whether to investigate Congressman Gary Condit in connection with allegations made by a former flight attendant. Details live, ABC's Pam Coulter. Pam? Doug, the grand jury decided it lacked jurisdiction to investigate obstruction allegations against Gary Condit, but the attorney for Anne Marie Smith said that was to be expected in his home district, calling it Condit country. Jim Robinson is convinced Condit obstructed justice by trying to get Smith to deny an affair in a false affidavit. And he has plans to refile the complaint complaint in another jurisdiction, Doug. Thanks, Pam. The EPA reportedly pushing for stricter limits in the amount of arsenic in drinking water. That's per the recommendations of the nation's leading scientist. Again, repeating our top story, black smoke billowing from the top of one of the towers. That's World Trade Center. A plane has crashed into the center. You can see flames. Unsure of injuries right now or what type of aircraft it might have been. You're listening to ABC News. This is a special report from News Talk 820. WBAP 802 News Talk 820. WBAP, I'm Dan Potter. We're going to stay with this breaking story out of Manhattan, a plane crashing into one tower of the World Trade Center. And we're going to go live now to ABC affiliate 1010 Winds, WINS in New York City for their coverage. Horrible story coming up. Right now we are looking at about 45 minutes on the city bound Lincoln Tunnel, 30 minutes on the Holland, 30 minutes on the George Washington Bridge. Cross Bronx is also very heavy from the Bronx River Parkway all the way into the Jersey bound upper level of the GWB as that phase of construction work continues. I'm Pete Torriello shadow traffic on 1010 winds. Winds news time 902. We've been talking with Joan Fleischer, an account executive at 1010 winds. Right now we're going to switch over to Kai Kendall. He saw the whole thing transpire from his vantage point on 14th Street. And again, we're talking about a plane crash into the World Trade Center. Kai, what did you see and what can you see now? Uh, well, I saw the, the plane come overhead. I happen to be looking south towards the World Trade Center. There is now another explosion occurring right at this moment in the other building, which means... Debris. Another. We're switching out ABC coverage. The other tower, the World Trade Center, has just exploded. This is ABC's continuing oh coverage. God. Another oh plane God. as we were watching. believe this. The second tower has exploded from about the 20 stories below. 
in a gargantuan explosion. Oh, my God, I don't believe it. Brian Lutz oh there God. on the scene as we were talking. Oh you just God, heard it. I was looking at it. The side, the northeast corner has exploded in the most incredible explosion. Flames are flying out of the building. They're five, ten stories high now. Black billowing smoke. The building corner, the whole entire corner is gone. It's missing. Brian, I don't know if you could see from your vantage point, from, from we could see that there was actually a second plane which flew into that second no, tower. No, I was looking at the tower itself, and nothing it exploded from the inside out. It's on one, two, three. It's on five floors. It's two separate fires now. One exactly on the corner of the north east side and the second one about five stories below it exactly in the middle of the building well oh as my God, both was... buildings are now burning uh both at burning the upper up. levels uh, a great deal of of smoke now as we say as brian was describing the scene from that first uh uh, explosion in the first building we actually saw a second airplane uh, smashed into the second World Trade Center building uh, we could see it from our vantage point oh, the scaffolding hanging right now I see it it's just swinging against the building I have very high power binoculars right now I did not see anything fly into the building I did not see mm. anything I am looking directly at both twin towers I can see 50% of the upper stories of the twi of both twin towers. The heat was so immense, I felt it here, and we are about eight, nine blocks from the north tower and about an additional 400 feet or 300 feet to the uh, south tower. Both explosions are on the north side of the towers. We are looking at uh, videotape replays now from our studio here, uh, Brian, and we can actually see uh, an airplane, looks like a twin-engine airplane, which approaches the second tower. Uh, and I'm trying to get my bearings. It appears that it approached the second tower from a westerly direction and uh, actually smashed into the far side of the building and flame came billowing out of the east side of the building and now we have both twin towers on fire a tremendous ball of fire uh, a huge explosion uh, in the upper levels of the world trade center in lower manhattan in downtown new york uh, no indication how it is that two airplanes uh, could smash into this uh, tallest landmark around uh, the World Trade Centers, of course, are a landmark in New York City that can be seen even on a on a cloudy day, can be seen from miles and miles around. Uh, Brian, can you tell us what's happening where you are right now? Uh, flames are billowing from the from the top from the south from the north side of the South Tower, and I see the the corner. The corner is a mass of flames. At least one, two, three four stories, then there's no smoke or flame for about a hundred feet, and then there's a second uh, two or three story high by about 75 feet uh, wall of flames crawling up the side of the towers. Brian, let me interrupt you just for a second, and let's go now. We have Jerry Very Howard. Crazy here. You have to speak up. Okay, stand by, uh, Brian. We have Jerry Howard on the line. Jerry Howard, a terrorism expert formerly with the city of New York. New York. Jerry, are you with us? I sure am. What are the odds that two airplanes are crashing into the World Trade Center and this this simply be a an incredible accident, or is this a terrorism attack? Well, I think it's, uh, at this point in time, it's hard to tell what's going on. We really have to evaluate what happened. Um, you know, if it were two planes, it certainly is of uh, concern. Um, I think that uh, we really need to understand what happened uh, before we... Uh, jump to any conclusions. Jerry, are you aware of any threats, any recent threats that have been made? Of course, we're hearing about threats all the time, but anything specifically referring to the World Trade Center or to New York no. City? No, there have been no specific threats uh, to uh, uh, that I know of. Uh, you know, we are in an environment right now where things are extremely tense around the world, but um, 
there have been uh, no specific threats uh, that I know of uh, against the uh, Trade Center or against uh, New York City. Just to recap, I have Jerry Hauer on the line, a terrorism expert. Um, two airplanes have crashed into both twin towers of the World Trade Center in lower Manhattan. Uh, one of the planes smashing into the second tower, even as uh, TV cameras and radio and this network were covering this explosion. A tremendous ball of flame and now uh, huge clouds of dark, dark smoke coming from both towers and now we have uh, jerry if you'll just stand by with me uh, we have another eyewitness on the line who saw what happened could you go ahead please Bri brian are you still yes, with I'm me still here i'm just watching it now uh the uh the south tower is is totally in blaze on the south side of the on the on the north east corner with the two things the flames have subsided, subsided substantially on the north side of the North Tower. There's a monstrous hole. There's a gigantic 45-degree angle gash. I can see with my binoculars certainly what looks like mechanical equipment uh, at, at the, in the center of the explosion. Uh, it looks like a large tail section, if I'm not mistaken, and I don't want to like presuppose something. Um, my hands are actually shaking, so it's hard to hold these binoculars exactly steadily. The heat of the second was so immense that we felt it come right through our windows. And luckily, I, had, I knew to open up the windows to allow any explosion, I mean any blast, to, uh, to pass through because the window most definitely, might, most definitely, to my opinion, might have blown in to, uh, to our upper floor here. It's, I can see now that there's fire and smoke coming from the north side of the building, and now I see tremendous smoke billowing out of the east side of, of the building. And this would be the explosion that just occurred. Okay. Uh, we're hearing people screaming, get off the streets, get off the streets. There's tremendous crowds here. Um, the, the activity, people are screaming now, get out of the streets, get out of the streets. Uh, I don't know who is screaming, but panic could could almost ensue rapidly if, if this escalates or if another uh if a, if a, i can't believe i saw it happen i did not see a plane brian do you uh, see uh any casualties any people being brought out of the building can no, you, are you I that close I at all can't, i can't see anything below say the uh the 60th floor the only thing that i see for sure uh, where I know, and I'm a licensed rigger, we do restoration here in the city of Manhattan, I see a scaffolding hanging uh, completely and totally vertical. There's nobody on it. It's, it seems that the fire is just above where the scaffold seems to be swinging right now. All right, that's Brian Lutz, an eyewitness uh, in lower Manhattan who actually saw uh, what happened there, this... Uh, tremendous explosion two explosions in the world trade center is jerry Hauer still with us jerry um you're still there are you not yeah, sir sure am. now if i recall the towers were struck by uh, the planes once before weren't, weren't they in 1993 well it was close they had a, an incident where a, came, a plane came close i don't remember that a plane actually hit the towers um, but you might have better recall on that than I do. I remember that there was, uh, it's, uh, I believe uh, several people were killed and more than a thousand others were injured. We have no idea of the casualties uh, today here at the World Trade Center, but it's going to be, it's hard to believe that there aren't casualties. I don't know if you're seeing pictures, Jerry, but... Yeah, uh, I, uh, unfortunately, with something like this, I would imagine there will be, uh, and... Uh, you know, we'll just have to uh, wait and see as the uh, fire department gets into the building. Now, this happened uh, about uh, 25 minutes ago, uh, no more than a half an hour ago, shortly before, uh, well, I would say, just as the business day is beginning, uh, the World Trade Center, both towers, contain thousands upon thousands of people, office workers, stockbrokers, uh, insurance people, all kinds of different offices uh, in the World Trade Center. And we're looking now at gaping holes in both towers 
in the upper levels, I'm, I'm hard-pressed to tell you what floors are affected, but it, it appears there are several floors. And uh, the plane, the second plane that crashed into the second building, Jerry, I don't know if you've seen pictures of it. If you have, do you have any indication of what kind of plane that was? No, at this point in time, it's, it's hard to tell. Um, you know, the smoke seems to be obscuring things, and it, it's hard to define what, what's going on up there. We'll remember that the uh, World Trade Center was indeed uh, the focus of an attack by uh, terrorists uh, some years ago when a car bomb was exploded in the basement of one of the uh, Twin Towers. Uh, and uh, uh, several people were convicted uh, of, of that bombing, of that terrorist attack. But this has been the uh, first kind of attack like this, if it is indeed an attack and not just a, an incredible accident uh, where you have two planes uh, crashing into the uh, uh, two of the tallest buildings uh, around in New York, uh, the World Trade Center. Uh, to recap, the smoke continues to billow from uh, the upper levels of both floors. It's a clear day in New York City, a cloudless sky, and uh, you can see the smoke, I'm certain, from uh, all uh, states around. Uh, we're going to go now to uh, ABC's Peter Jennings, who is uh, also covering this uh, amazing turn of events. Here's Peter Jennings. Grim, a witness who was You're listening to live coverage of two planes crashing into the separate towers of the World Trade Center in New York City on WBAP. One additional note, the FBI, according to Associated Press, now investigating reports of plane hijacking before the World Trade Center crashes. Here again, ABC television coverage, Peter Jennings. The courtyard where the, where the World Trade Center is. So we ran to the window right after we we, we felt this kind of a sonic boom as if it were an earthquake. He's the voice of Lindsey Grimm, an eyewitness. We ran to the window and somebody yelled, "Oh my God, a plane just flew into the World Trade Center." Is this what we think of as the first one or the second one, Lindsey? Uh, it was the first one because I was actually outside for the second one. And the first one appears to have gone into the Southern Tower. Am I correct? Correct. And the second one, did you see the second one? I was, I had my back facing, I was running as fast as I, well, not running, but walking at a brisk pace away from the two buildings when I heard it, and people just started screaming and running. Now, you know the area fairly well working down there. Is is 9 o'clock in the morning the time when people have gathered in very large number? People get there earlier, get there later? Yeah, I actually just happened, I usually get here a little after 9, and I happen to be here early for a morning, this mor uh, for a meeting this morning, so, yeah, I mean, it's... You, you see the general amount of traffic mm. about 9 o'clock. Is that when it happened, right at 9? No, just before and just after 9. Okay. In, in there have been two. Can you see outside at the moment as to anything that's happening? I am outside. And what do you, where are you and what do you see? I am west of the two buildings looking directly at them. And it's, it's difficult to look at. I'll tell you that much. So this is not an area which is easy to reach for emergency services. These two buildings, Hud, the Hudson River, there's only the, uh, the west side drive that comes up there. Is there a large amount of emergency equipment descending on the place? There sure is. As soon as I got out of the building, it's obviously the first thing you're surrounded by is, is sirens and noise everywhere. And the, you can hear it coming by now, even still. Anything else you know that you'd like to add? Uh, just as I was coming out of the building, um, I heard somebody sort of ushering people away, and they were saying, you guys got to get out of here, it's bomb. Many thanks. Lindsey Grimm, who saw this occurring, at least the first uh, hesitate to call it an attack. The first incident we'll continue to call it for now, and very much the second one now. That's what it looks like. Both of the towers in the Twin Trade Towers are now on fire. We have no idea whatsoever uh, the, the measure of casualties inside or the measure of damage inside, though you can only imagine it. The New York City of Office of Emergency Management said to us a short while ago they do not know what happened yet. I um, want to check in very quickly with the President of the United States, John Cochran, who is the President in Florida. John? Peter, as you know, the President's down in Florida talking about education. He got up out of his uh, hotel suite this morning, was about to leave. Reporters saw the White House Chief of Staff, Andy Card, whisper into his ear. The reporter said to the President, do you know what's going on in New York? He said he did, and said he will have something to say about it later. His first event is about a half an hour at an elementary school in Sarasota, Florida. Thanks, John. John Cochran with the President. President's in Florida today pushing his education reform. It will get wiped off the agenda today in view of this extraordinarily serious accident. For those of you who don't know the Twin Trade Towers, and it's a popular destination for tourists when they come to New York City, it has financial offices in it, it has government offices, <coughs> it has lots of access on the top, um, above where this accident, actually, where this incident actually occurred, where tourists come. 
Um, it's one of the great views in New York City, and people gather there, certainly at the foot of the building, fairly early in the morning to be able to go and see it. The two collisions, the two incidents have occurred about two-thirds of the way up. Um, John Miller, we haven't, <coughs> excuse me, we haven't had a aircraft fly into a building in New York, as far as I know, since just after the Second World War, when the Empire State Building, when it flew into the Empire State Building. That's right. A, a B-52 flew into the Empire State Building uh, then, and uh, this is uh, this is really the first time there's been anything like that since. John, I was listening as you and and uh, Chris Eichen, the head of our investigative unit, wandered up here to the rim just a short while ago to saying. One of you, I think, this is something they've been waiting to happen. Who are you talking about? What are you talking about? What we were talking about is uh, there's been a great uh, frustration since the bombing of the World Trade Center, which the suspects later told federal authorities w were intended to take the building down, that it didn't have a larger effect. And U.S. intelligence, FBI uh, people for years have heard that they've always wanted to try and finish that job off um, to take the buildings out and uh, that it was another viable target. Interestingly, ironically, whatever you want to call it, the World Trade Center just hired two weeks ago the head of the FBI's National Security Division for Counterterrorism in New York to augment and take over their security, pretty much aware of the level of threat that this is as a symbolic target. One of the things that anybody... You're listening to continuing coverage of the incident at the World Trade Center. There have been two aircraft running into each of the World Trade Center towers. We do not know if it is a terrorist attack or just some outlandish coincidence. But let's get the very latest now. Let's uh, get caught up in a summary in ABC News status report. Two planes have now crashed into New York's World Trade Center, one after the other, hitting both towers. This eyewitness was talking with ABC's Jim Hickey when... Gargantuan explosion! Oh my God, I don't believe it! Brian Lutz oh there God. on the scene as we were talking, oh you just heard God, it. I was looking at it, it's the side, the northeast corner has exploded in the most incredible explosion. Flames are flying out of the building. They're five, ten stories high now. Black billowing smoke. The building corner, the whole entire corner is gone. It's missing. Gaping holes on the upper stories of the New York landmark. No immediate word of injuries or fatalities. In the twin disasters, which happened just before and after nine this morning, the towers were struck by bombers eight years ago, and the Pentagon says it had no advance warning of this attack. However, the FBI is investigating reports of a plane hijacked before the crashes. Joan Bennett, ABC News. Well, let's go back now to ABC's Peter Jennings. With no warning. Thank you. You're listening to live coverage from ABC News. A, two planes have crashed into the World Trade Center in lower Manhattan in New York. I'm Jim Hickey. You were just listening to a conversation between ABC's Peter Jennings and uh, national security correspondent John McCrethy. And as Peter reported, the Associated Press is now reporting that officials uh, say the FBI is investigating reports of a plane hijacking just before the crashes just before the two planes crashed into the World Trade Center. No indication of uh, if there indeed was a hijacking or if there was where it came from and, and where the hijacking took place. Back in News Center 820, I'm Dan Potter. Let's go live now to WBAP's Ray Hoffman in Manhattan, who is uh, within eye view of the World Trade Center. Ray? Yes, I uh, was looking out the window a little while ago, and then I came back to my office so that I could call you, and I can see live television pictures, so I'm following this continually. Uh, this is... Uh I don't know how to describe it, of course. I, I, I cannot imagine, Ray. What, if you could, uh, I don't know if you've had a chance to look on the ground. We have not seen any pictures of, of the pandemonium that has to be, exist at the base of the World Trade Center. Well, I used to commute through there every day, and you've got the... Um you have the PATH trains, the, the trains that go under the river from New Jersey, bringing commuters in from Hoboken. They come in there. You've got all the subway trains that come in on all the lines go into the World Trade Center, or practically all of them. So you have all those people. You have people going into the World Financial Center across the way, which is the headquarters of uh, Wall Street Journal, Merrill Lynch, and on and on, and the commodities exchanges just across the street. You have a large community now. And in fact, I used to live there, Battery Park City. It has uh, several thousand people in 
and apartments right along the river, and that's um, you know, just walking distance right across the way. So you've got a crossing of an awful lot of people down there. We went through this when we had the bombing before mm. in um, uh, 1994, but the difference was uh, that, that happened in midday. This happened really as the, the crowds, the commuting crowds were just coming through. Okay, uh, we're going to come back to you, Ray. I know you have some other commitments that you need to honor here, but uh, one of the things I'd like to know when we come back is what kinds of businesses exist in the upper halves of these two buildings, if, if you can help us. That is WDAB's Ray Hoffman in Manhattan. Let's return now to ABC's continuing coverage of this disaster at the World Trade Center in New York. The upper 70 floors and the north tower I see about the upper uh, 40 floors. The gash in the tower is about 45 degree angle and it's got to be 250 to 300, 250 feet uh, at about a 40 degree angle and uh, I can see with my binoculars people are screaming get out of the streets below me there's tremendous confusion. Um, I can see a huge chunk of airplane that's about uh, appears to be maybe 10 feet in from, from the skin of, uh, of the tower. Uh, the flames are spreading rapidly on, uh, on the north side of the east tower. Do you have any questions? I mean, I feel like I'm just talking. Well, you, you, you're, doing, you're doing just fine, Brian. Brian Lutz is an eyewitness in Lower Manhattan who uh, saw the both explosions of the World Trade Centers. And what Brian is telling us, the facts, as he knows them, as he witnessed them, there's a great deal we don't know. Uh, as we say, the FBI, uh, according to the Associated Press, is investigating reports of a plane hijacking before these crashes occurred. Again, continuing with the AP report, a senior government official says the agency is pursuing reports that one or both of the planes were hijacked and that the crashes may have been the result of a suicide mission. The source stressed that the reports are preliminary and officials certainly do not know the cause of the crashes yet, but a second government official, uh, unnamed, told the Associated Press it certainly does not look like an accident. Now that is all speculation. There is no uh, knowledge now whether it was intentional or whether it was an accident, but if it was an accident, it's in incredibly uh, just incredible that two planes would crash into both towers of the World Trade Center, two of the tallest buildings uh, in New York, Connecticut, New Jersey, in Pennsylvania. Uh, the second plane is actually uh, caught on videotape by uh, hovering TV helicopters as they were filming the first World Trade Center on fire. You can see the second plane approaching from what appears to be the west uh, banking slightly uh, and headed directly for the second building. Uh, it disappears from this camera angle uh, behind the building and seconds later there is a tremendous explosion from the other side of the building, windows blown out, a huge ball of orange and red flame and smoke then comes billowing out of the upper levels of the second tower. Both towers now on fire, gaping holes in the upper levels of both towers. ABC's Jim Hickey there with our continuing coverage. Let's switch back now live to Manhattan. WBAP's Ray Hoffman. Uh, Ray, what kinds of businesses are housed in the upper levels of these towers? And might one of them or many of them been targets of this if, in fact, it was a terrorist attack? Uh, it's always conceivable. The governor of New York, for instance, has an office in one of the two towers in a high floor. And there are a lot of New York State offices. Offices. Also in uh, one of the towers, I think it's the uh, the southernmost, which would have been the one that was hit second, as I'm picturing this situation. Morgan Stanley Dean Witter has a large operation, and uh, their, uh, the lobby is filled with Morgan Stanley uh, signs and so forth, and they have a number of floors. I don't know if they're at the upper floors or not. Uh, of course, uh, there's the uh, you know the restaurants and so forth at the 107th floor on the one building, and uh, that would not have been uh, open at this hour. They don't serve breakfast except on the weekends, so at least that's you know, one consolation, a very small one. And, and and the population of these two buildings at the uh, start of a workday has got to be in the tens of thousands, correct? Yeah, I, I haven't a clue what the actual number is. Maybe I heard it years ago when we had the other bombings. But uh, you're talking about two buildings of a uh, hundred plus stories and uh, the floor space is uh, uh, would certainly be enough to house uh, several hundred employees per floor you know three or four hundred employees let's guess 
could be employed on uh, each of these 100 floors, or almost right. all of them. Thank you, Ray. That is WBAP's Ray Hoffman live in Manhattan. Let's return now to ABC News. Continuing coverage, the crashes of two planes into both towers of the World Trade Center in New York. And that's where they had expected to pull a lot of people out. Uh, this time because they had so much success the last time. Mm -hmm. it, similarly, John, if you look at the two buildings, it does appear that at least in the in the northern tower there, or the left tower as you see it on the screen, uh, below the incident, the building at least looks on the outside to be reasonably secure. Um, and people will have a long, horrendous, terrifying walk down in a darkened building. Um, but we'll at least be able to get out on the ground. By the way, Claire Shipman, uh, ABC's Claire Shipman, just called in. That she's been checking with the FBI. She also says that the FBI had no warning whatsoever. Their crisis management operation in Washington is in place uh, in conjunction with the Federal Aviation Administration. They are all now, which makes perfect sense, focusing on uh, the recovery of survivors. Um, the New York Stock Exchange has uh, has delayed indefinitely its opening uh, today. Uh, this this will just have not only an extraordinary effect on the national psyche. One surmises, um, dissimilar perhaps, but but from what happened in Oklahoma City, but. A very clear reminder to those of us in the United States that terrorism of a huge magnitude, with which we're somewhat more accustomed in the Middle East and in Africa, given the attacks on the U.S. embassies a couple of summers ago. But a reminder again that as far as international terrorism is concerned and people's anger and even desperation on this occasion with the United States is going to find itself manifest um, here on U.S. soil. John, is the... Here's the president now in, in Florida. I wonder if everybody knows what's going on. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a Florida man. A difficult moment for America. I, um, unfortunately, will be going back to Washington after my remarks. Secretary Rod Pace and Lieutenant Governor <clears throat> will take the podium and discuss education. I do want to thank the folks here at, uh, at the Booker Elementary School for their hospitality. Uh, today, we've had a national tragedy. Uh, two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. I have spoken to the Vice President, to the Governor of New York, to the Director of the FBI, and have ordered that the full resources of the federal government go to help the victims and their families and, the, and to conduct a full-scale investigation to hunt down and to find those folks who committed this act. Terrorism against our nation will not stand. And now if you join me in a moment of silence. May God bless the victims, their families, and America. Thank you very much. Bush speaking at, a, at an event in Florida, and as he just said, he calls it an apparent terrorist attack against uh, the United States of America and he says terrorism will not stand and that the people responsible for this apparent terrorist attack will be hunted and tracked down. Now, there are several reports coming in that uh, the uh, World Trade Center was attacked by uh, hijacked, at least one hijacked airplane. Reuters is now reporting that the hijacked uh, plane came from Boston. However, that is unconfirmed. None of these reports is confirmed at this point. But uh, President uh, Bush now uh, upping the ante or at least uh, uh, confirming, apparently confirming what so many people had feared that this uh, seems to be a terrorist attack and not an accident, uh, an incredible accident, two airplanes uh, crashing into both twin towers of the World Trade Center uh, within moments of each other, one happening, happening shortly before 9 o'clock central time, I'm sorry, 9 o'clock eastern time, uh, the other uh, smashing into the building as cameras were rolling shortly after 9 o'clock eastern time. That second plane smashing into the number two tower, uh, creating a huge, horrifying ball of flame and smoke in the upper towers. Uh, smoke continues to billow 
from the upper levels of both towers, uh, this thick black smoke uh, thoroughly obscuring the roofs of both buildings, making it uh, impossible for any rescue attempt uh, from at least the uh, uh, top of the buildings by helicopter because there's simply no place to land, uh, no place uh, a helicopter pilot can see even where to land. Uh, we were told by eyewitnesses uh, before that uh, huge uh, pieces of uh, debris uh, helicoptered down to the street, uh, smashing into the street. The World Trade Towers are 110 stories tall, uh, and the uh, airplanes crashed into the very upper levels. Of, it appears to be in the upper 90s levels of uh, both buildings. Let's go back now to Peter Jennings and as we continue our live coverage of this horrifying event. Located in the World Trade Center complex, although not in the in the Twin Towers. Just right north next door. North of the Trade Towers right. in, in the World Trade Center, in the other northern World Trade Center there. And on an occasion like this, this is not one I, they, they absolutely anticipate when they got going. They're talking very concerned with chemical and biological warfare. They've got extensive plans about that, which they very often demonstrate to the press. Um, I'm going to interrupt myself and everybody else for a second because one of our senior producers, Mark Obenhaus, uh, is on the phone and he saw the incident. Mark, do you hear me? I do indeed, Peter. Go ahead. Um, well, I was leaving my house uh, to go to work and I walked down the street to go to the subway. I was at the corner of Franklin and West Broadway. And as I was approaching the subway, a tremendous roar uh, went over my head and, and I looked up immediately and it was a plane um, and much lower than I've ever seen a plane in lower Manhattan and it was a large plane I couldn't <coughs> identify it as anything specific except that it was a commercial jet certainly um, and it it then my eyes followed it because this is approximately 15 blocks from the World Trade Center and it it just slammed right into it and was completely engulfed by the by the building it was extraordinary no, no wings flew off nothing like that it just went directly in creating this sort of cavern like hole and and suddenly then big big uh flames started protruding from it and then of course smoke and 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 then debris started just catapulting and of course the area that we're in there's a great deal of foot traffic and people are just approaching and beginning to just gasp at uh, and just the sight of the building itself, even if they hadn't seen it, uh, the actual incident, the actual impact, just the sight of this huge building it engulfed in flame with this massive cavernous hole in the side of it. And we stood there, I can't tell you the amount of time, I, I would estimate it's about 15 minutes, and, uh, and, and of course there's all kinds of service coming down, fire department and so forth, and then suddenly from my vantage point, which would be north of the building, the sec, the the far tower suddenly explodes in flames. Uh, uh, yet again, a similar kind of a of an event. And I now see. I've, I've run down the street to my home where I have the television on, and I saw the, that that too was another airplane. It, it from our vantage point, you couldn't tell what exactly it was that hit the hit the hit the second tower, but it was a, a similar, seemingly almost like bomb blast, uh, and with flames and debris protruding wildly from. From the building. Mark, let me ask you a couple of more specific questions. You now confirm for us, I think, that it was the first attack on the tower that you saw. Yes. What, what direction was the aircraft coming from? It was coming from the north. It was coming it, from the north down over Manhattan itself? Yes. Um, it, well, it would have been flying roughly over the west side. Um, I'm, uh, I'm on, as I say, West Broadway, which is probably a quarter mile from the river. Um, so it was on a direct path north, from the north. Uh, into the uh, into the North Tower. Do you remember what ABC was senior producer Mark Obenhaus, uh, who was an eyewitness to the uh, incredible events, uh, speaking with ABC's Peter Jennings. On the line with us now is uh, ABC White House correspondent Ann Compton, who is with the president in Florida, and the president seems uh, understandably shaken by this, Ann. The president is dramatically shaken by this. When word came confirming the second plane crash, uh, President Bush was sitting in a classroom of second graders, and his chief of staff, Andy Card, came and whispered to him, and you could tell by the look on his face he was appalled. The president has immediately called the vice president and the FBI and uh, started the wheels of government in motion. He is returning directly to the White House. 
He, the president has often spoken of the dangers of uh, terrorist attacks on the United States, but one as dramatic as using uh, commercial airliners and hitting populated areas like this is, again, simply appalling to the president. And, of course, the president did call this an apparent terrorist attack. This is going to be a significant challenge for his presidency and the White House, uh, uh, as was the uh, original bombing of the World Trade Center, Ann. And, and think, too, of the times such as the bombing of the Oklahoma City building, where a president is immediately called upon to insist that the U.S. government will not stand for terrorism at home or uh, uh, foreign involvement. And in this case, the president has uh, has hit really the first major crisis of his administration. His, he he canceled his event speaking to students at the school saying only in a message to americans that uh... their prayer he asked for a moment of silence asked for their prayers for the families and the victims of uh, of this tragedy but you can see now the government springing into action looking for the causes the perpetrators and a full political press by this administration uh, to let this not go unanswered. And now the president says that uh, he and you and all of uh, all the reporters covering him will be heading immediately back to Washington, cutting his Florida trip short. The president has decided to return to the Oval Office where he can best manage the United States response. And uh, he's doing so cutting short this floor trip. We're in the motorcade now moving toward the airport. Um, but uh, he will certainly have aides, advisors, the vice president, and others uh, standing by in Washington helping him to, uh, to handle this. But uh, this is a time when a president has two roles to make sure that the resources of the federal government are keenly focused on this. And the other is to lead the nation in mourning and in shock of this kind of attack on American civilians. News Talk 820 WBAP, that's ABC's Ann Compton with the president as our continuing coverage uh, continues. Let's uh, get a synopsis now of what's happened in the last uh, less than an hour at the uh, World Trade Center in New York. ABC News status report. <laughs> Disaster in New York City. Two planes, minutes apart, have crashed into the upper floors of each tower of the World Trade Center. Both towers engulfed in flames. It appears to be a terrorist attack. That from President Bush. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a difficult moment for America. I, um, unfortunately, will be going back to Washington after my remarks. Secretary Rod Pace and Lieutenant Governor <clears throat> will take the podium and discuss education. I do want to thank the folks here at, uh, at the Booker Elementary School for their hospitality. Uh, today we've had a national tragedy. Uh, two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. I have spoken to the Vice President, to the Governor of New York, to the Director of the FBI, and have ordered that the full resources of the federal government uh, go to help the victims and their families and, the f and to conduct a full-scale investigation to hunt down and to find those folks who committed this act. President Bush, while everything is preliminary, a source tells the Associated Press the reports that the planes were hijacked are being investigated, hijacked and purposely flown into both towers of the World Trade Center. We're live with ABC's Tim Shell. Tim is literally stuck on the George Washington Bridge. Tim, are you with us? Uh, Larry, yes. New York City has virtually been shut down as a result of this uh, chaos today. Uh, remember, Larry, tens of thousands of people work in the World Trade Center complex. Imagine the chaos there. But the city has literally shut down uh, avenues to get in, like the George Washington Bridge that I can see closed in front of me. The Lincoln and Holland Tunnels closed as well. The scope of the tragedy not even near in our view yet. ABC's Tim Sheld with us live. Again, two planes crashed, apparently deliberately, an apparent terrorist attack, according to President Bush, into the Twin Towers, into the World Trade Center in New York City. I'm Larry Jacobs, ABC News. This is a special report from News Talk 820, WBAP. 842, WBAP. Let's rejoin now ABC News' continuing coverage of the disaster at the World Trade Center in New York. Tower, that one tower of the Trade Center, they recorded incredibly a second aircraft flying into the picture and flying directly into the second tower of the World Trade Center. When uh, it too then exploded into a great 
huge ball of flame and smoke. Uh, no word on casualties yet. Uh, the uh, rescue attempt of uh, people continues at this hour, although it is an enormous, enormously difficult job. Uh, the uh, planes crashed, as I say, into the upper levels, but there are floors above the crash point that appear untouched by the impact. So we're going to switch to ABC television coverage. Peter Jennings, there is also smoke billowing in Washington, D.C. right now. Upon thousands of people in the levels below. Taking uh, around the White House in, in the wake of the um, apparent attacks on the World Trade Center, and we suddenly just saw the smoke rising from behind the old executive office building. We have people on their way there now, but it's, it's like nothing uh, I've ever seen. I mean, we've never seen that kind of smoke coming from, from anything that I'm, would ordinarily occur here. I must also tell you, Claire, I think if you think about what's behind the, the EOB there, you're really down uh, in pretty open area. It doesn't look like a place where a building would be on fire. No, that's right, although there are a number of buildings just behind the old executive office building on G Street that could potentially be on fire, but nothing you would necessarily think of as a target. Um, Apparently, we're also... Claire, let me interrupt you for a second. We now have fire confirmed at the Pentagon. I've John McCrethy at the Pentagon can hear me. John, please get in touch immediately if you can and brief us in there. John McCrethy has actually been evacuated from the Pentagon, and parts of the Pentagon are indeed being evacuated. Um, we want to hold our breath here, it just seems to me, for a second, and... and, and and, and not get into a mode that the country is under attack. But we now have two attacks on the Twin Trade Tower Center. U.S. buildings, city buildings completely evacuated in New York City. We have this mysterious black smoke at the southwest corner of the White House, which is to say there's something going on behind the old executive office building. We now have a report that fire has been confirmed at the Pentagon. ABC's John McCrethy, our Pentagon correspondent, who's been plugging in as quickly to the intelligence and counterintelligence units there this morning, has been temporarily evacuated. But that is as much as we know for sure. Let's, Let's go now back to ABC Radio. It apparently has been a plane crash into the Pentagon. Center in New York City. The White House is being evacuated, all coming your way in 40 seconds on mark. Station standby. We'll go back for that ABC News special report, but again, it appears as though this fire at the Pentagon has also been caused by a crash, an airplane crash of some sort. What are we listening to there? Say again. Say again, please. Come here, John. Yeah. Good. Try to correct. So we have bomb squads. I, I think you're going to see a lot of this, and I think we were talking about this uh, a few minutes ago. In fact, uh, when I was telling you that in New York they were evacuating the municipal building, the United Nations, uh, Gracie Mansion, which is the mayor's residence, all potential targets, I suggested to you that shortly in Washington. <laughs> This is a special report from ABC News. I'm Larry Jacobs. We're now getting reports of a plane having crashed into the Pentagon. Repeating, a plane has now crashed into the Pentagon, according to reports. We already have the White House now is being evacuated. Of course, President Bush is not in the White House now. The White House is being evacuated because of terrorist threats. President Bush earlier said that the planes that crashed into the Twin Towers, into New York City's World Trade Center, it does appear to be a terrorist attack. The latest news again, a plane has now crashed into the Pentagon. We're just getting this right now. There's an explosion outside the Pentagon. The building is being evacuated, according to eyewitnesses. Again, this is in addition to two other planes that have crashed into the Twin Towers, the World Trade Center, both towers, two different planes, planes believed to have been hijacked. Again, President Bush calling this an apparent terrorist attack. I'm Larry Jacobs, and this has been a special report from ABC News. You're listening to continuing coverage of the incidents now at the World Trade Center and at the Pentagon, live on News Talk 820 WBAP. Let's rejoin ABC News. A stack of beer crates. So all of lower Manhattan is just standing in the streets on this sunny morning looking at this unrealistic sight in front of us, this gray smoke coming out of the Trade Center. Okay, Bill, talk to as many people as you can. Call us back when you can. Um, let's return to Washington visually at the moment. Just take a look at that picture. That smoke behind the executive office building, 
which is right next uh, to the White House, we now believe is from a fire in the courtyard of the Pentagon, or at least where an aircraft appears to have crashed in the general vicinity of the Pentagon. And now the Pentagon is southwest from the White House across the Potomac River, and what we think we may be seeing there, <coughs> emphasis on think, is smoke uh, in the distance uh, rather than uh, immediately behind the Pentagon. Precautions being taken everywhere. The U.S. Capitol is now being uh, evacuated as a precautionary measure. The U.S. Treasury, according to at least one eyewitness, is being evacuated as a precautionary measure. And there was an explosion outside the Pentagon. Um, and that's, a, that's an issue of eyewitnesses from both inside and from outside, but we're not quite sure what we're looking at. And we are... We are looking now at Air Force One. We've just been told by the uh, three explosions now, two at the World Trade Center, two planes crashing into both towers of the World Trade Center. It's ABC's Jim Hickey. apparent explosion at the Pentagon in Washington. Uh, the noise that you are hearing behind us is Air Force One uh, turning up its engines and getting ready to leave uh, Florida with President Bush on board. He's heading back to Washington. Uh, and we saw moments ago a detailed search of luggage uh, going on board Air Force One by the Secret Service and by um, uh, security dogs going through the luggage very carefully. Now, there is one report from an AP radio reporter in uh, Washington who claims to have seen the tail of a large airliner. He says it plowed right into the Pentagon. Uh, and all we know now is that there was an explosion of some sort in the vicinity of the Pentagon and that there is now uh, thick uh, white and gray smoke uh, pouring forth from the uh, Pentagon area. Um, people have been evacuated from the Pentagon, uh, including uh, ABC's own John McCrethy, whose uh, office is there. He is uh, uh, en route to outside the Pentagon. We're hoping to get in touch with him. Uh, there are reports coming out of the Middle East now that uh, some uh, groups in the Middle East are uh, claiming responsibility for these attacks, but uh, we will hold those in abeyance uh, for the moment. This additional note now, Associated Press says the Federal Aviation Administration has shut down all aircraft takeoffs nationwide. We presume that this includes all airports in Dallas-Fort Worth, including DFW Airport. The FAA shutting down all aircraft takeoff na takeoffs nationwide. O'Hare Airport in Chicago, for example, planes are still landing, but all departures have been stopped. The Sears Tower in Chicago, uh, Chicago's great landmark tower, has been closed, and there are no aircraft taking off in the U.S. This is clearly because while we have not been able to confirm, well, we've not been able to confirm precisely what happened, there is for the Pentagon in that is the courtyard of the Pentagon. The Pentagon is indeed exactly what it's described, uh, just on the other side of the Potomac River um, from the Capitol. And there you see fires burning in the courtyard of the, of the Pentagon, confirming what we had, what we'd been told almost immediately by eyewitnesses. Dan Potter back in News Center 820. Let's uh, see how this is impacting events locally. WBAP's Sandra Gonzalez is live at the Federal Building in downtown Fort Worth. Sandra, is there any sign of increased security there? Uh, the Federal folks here at the uh, Federal Building are still assessing the situation as are the rest of us. They have told security to have more of a keen sense of awareness, to be aware of what's going around them. But at this time, there is no different level of security. But at this moment, they are talking about it, and they will decide what to do about the federal buildings within our region. But at this point, security officers are just keeping an eye on things going around them and, and being extra careful because of the situation. Hmm. Live Sa at the Fort Worth Federal Building, Sandra Gonzalez, WBAP, 24-hour news. Stay with us, Sandra. We heard uh, Peter Jennings say that uh, large buildings, landmark buildings around the country, for instance, the uh, uh, Sears Tower in Chicago being evacuated on uh, the, 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 at least the threat that this could happen again. Do you see any evidence in downtown Fort Worth that some of the skyscrapers in the city there have emptied? No, not at, not at this point, Dan. They... Uh, Things are going 
as business as usual, but people are aware of what's going on. People are talking about it. And at this point, federal officials are assessing the situation to see if they do need to go to that next level of uh, security measures because of, of what's going on in New York, Dan. WBAP's Jim Ryan now joins us live. Jim, uh, you were en route to DFW Airport. Are you there yet? Uh, just about that. I am told that uh, flights into New York have been at least uh, postponed for now, and that's the expectation. It, uh, airport security is always a major concern of the people who run DFW. The Orange Airport security signs have been up for months, in fact, up for years now, advising people of the heightened alert of FAA security. But now, just in the last few minutes, Dan, I heard scanner traffic indicating that, and, and then I confirmed with the Dallas police uh, that officers are being uh, sent to the federal buildings in downtown Dallas, not in response to anything specific, but just to be on standby to be at those locations. The Earl Cabell Federal Building, the, uh, the federal building just across from uh, Dallas City Hall, those uh, facilities over by the convention center where the federal government has offices set up. A sergeant with DPD tells me that that they simply want to be on standby, to be in location in case something happens. We saw similar activities and similar preparations made after the Oklahoma City bombing uh, in 1995. So it's not uh, terribly unusual that that would be going on now, Dan. And, Jim, uh, as, as we've reported a few moments ago, Associated Press saying that the Federal Aviation Administration has halted all airline departures nationwide. Uh, you're close enough to the airport. What can you tell us about air traffic there? Are there still incoming flights, and do you see any departing? No, the skies look empty right now, uh, but, uh, hey, again, we'll have to get a little closer to try to confirm that one way or the other, Dan. All right, WBAP's Jim Ryan near DFW Airport. Let's return now to ABC News. Again, we have to say that sometimes the camera and the eye don't see precisely what is happening. We have now had eyewitness reports from our sources in Washington say they did see a plane crash in the vicinity of the Pentagon. We're looking at it. Um, from the western, from the Washington end, uh, which would be to the east of the Pentagon, slightly to the north east, but east of the Pentagon itself. And it looks very much as if there is fire in the courtyard itself in that central quad. But you can see a small plume of smoke on the on the northern side of the building as well. At least I think it's the north. Yes, it is the northern side of the building as well. And we're not um, absolutely certain. The Associated Press. Um, it, quoting a senior U.S. official, um, or quoting a U.S. official, is now saying affirmatively that one of the two planes that crashed into the World Trade Center was hijacked after takeoff from Boston at this time of day. Um, it any number of aircraft taking off from Boston to go ABC's John McCleffy believes um, that it was an American Airlines flight, flight number 11 bound for Los Angeles. And I realize when, when, when saying that, we're going to put the fear of God into a lot of people on the West Coast and, and people who know who are connected with that flight. But our Pentagon correspondent, John McCarthy, just reports into us that American Airlines Flight 11, bound for Los Angeles from Boston, was actually hijacked out of Boston. That's a helicopter over the Pentagon. Um, I apologize to the audience. We have two separate monitors here. They show different pictures. Can you tell me which one the audience is seeing at home so I can work with that? And may I not have to ask again? Thanks very much. Um, I don't. And, um, and so we now have the first incident at the Trade Center and the second trade incident at the Trade Center as two aircraft. We know that one of them, at, we know it this moment, but one of them, according to um, officials talking both to the Associated Press and a confirmation from ABC's John McCarthy at the Pentagon that it was a commercial aircraft, commercial aircraft, um, that was hijacked out of Boston, which could have been any time before uh, 9 o'clock this morning because the first attack on the Trade Tower was um, just before 9 o'clock and the second one was after that. And John Miller, you're listening. Um, actually, it's uh, it's interesting. Uh, there's no there's no way to characterize any part of this as fortunate. But if you look at cities who are prepared to handle an incident like this, 
Um, and as you've seen, New York's emergency response to this, it is probably one of the few places that is, that is prepared with the kind of equipment, response, and rescue efforts that could actually address something like this. And Washington is probably the other. Um, immediately when this happened, the entire emergency service unit, which comprises hundreds of specially trained cops, was mobilized to the scene. Now a triage center, um, a triage center uh, for the injured has been set up just around the corner from the World Trade Center. It's um, an incredible scene down there with a tremendous amount of equipment. Um, the Federal Aviation Administration has actually gone even further than it did a few minutes ago. It, it was uh, forming all, asking all planes not to take off. Now the FAA has ordered all aircraft currently in the air over the United States to land at the nearest airport. Now you can imagine what may be happening or what they think might be happening in some part of the country that there is somebody else on some aircraft coming from somewhere or going somewhere <clears throat> with evil in there with evil intentions and so all aircraft currently in the air over the United States have been ordered to land at the nearest airport. I think one other thing I just want to check one thing because um, one of the very first people the president talked to was the director of the FBI and Pierre Thomas who covers the Justice Department and the FBI for us has been here. Um, they may think they prepare for this kind of thing here but man it must have been a shock. Stunning shock. Uh, the FBI Special Operations Center is now in full alert. The FBI is extremely concerned that there would be additional attacks. Normally when you have a situation like this they immediately get on the line with the CIA, the various intelligence agencies trying to get a sense of who might have been planning something but right now the first order of business is to protect against a second attack third attack the feeling is normally when you have this kind of situation there will be more attacks almost immediately let's go to the trade tower again because John we now have right what do we have we don't it looks like a, a new plume a new large plume of smoke We've been watching the uh, video here at News Center 820. It appears as though the top half of the uh, second tower at the World Trade Center, which was hit, has now collapsed and fallen to the streets of Manhattan. That, that's the scene at this moment at the World Trade Center. Stan Daler from ABC's Good Morning America is down uh, in, in the general vicinity. Dan, can you tell us what has just happened? Yes, Peter. It's Don Daler down here. I'm four blocks north of the World Trade Center. The second building that was hit by the plane has just completely collapsed. The entire building has just collapsed as if a demolition team set off. When you see the old demolitions of these old buildings, it's My holding God. it down on itself and it is not there anymore. The second building that was hit by the plane has just completely collapsed. The entire building has just collapsed as if a demolition team set off. When you see the old demolitions of these old buildings, it's My holding God. it down on itself and it is not there anymore. That should be it. It Thanks has very much, completely then. collapsed. The whole side has collapsed? The whole there? building has collapsed. The whole building has collapsed? The building has collapsed. That's the southern tower you're talking exactly. about. Exactly. The second building that we witnessed the airplane enter had been, the top half had been fully involved in flame it just collapsed there is panic on the street thousands of people running up church street which is what i'm looking out on trying to get away but the entire at least as far as i can see the top half of the building at least half of it i can't see below that half of it just started with a gigantic rumble folded in on itself and collapsed in a huge plume of smoke and dust we are talking about massive casualties here at the moment, and we have... Whew. That is extraordinary. There is panic on the streets. There are people screaming and running from the site. The gigantic plume of smoke has reached me, and I'm probably a quarter of a mile north of there. Peter. Now, this is a... This is what it looked like moments ago. My God. It's Peter Jennings reporting from ABC News World Headquarters as we watch the entire World Trade Center, one of the buildings, collapse upon itself. 
a most incredible, horrifying sight. The building has simply disappeared and collapsing, and collapsing itself. upon itself. Smoke covers work. smoke and dust and we debris now covers almost all of lower Manhattan. It is uh, a most inc ever incredible sight. The being Here's demolished. Peter Jennings. Your purpose knows that if you're going to do this, you have to get at the, at the under infrastructure of a building and bring it down. Peter? Yes, Dan. Uh, what, what appeared to happen from my vantage point, the top part of the building was totally involved in fire, and there was there appeared to be no effort possible to put that fire out. It looked like the top part of the building was so weakened by the fire that it just the weight of it collapsed the rest of the building. That's what appeared to happen. I did not see anything happening at the base of the building. It all appeared to start at the top and then just collapse the rest of the building by the sheer weight of the top. WBAP Fort Worth, Dallas. There was no explosion or anything at the base part of it, but I, I did see that the top part of it started to, to collapse. The walls started to bulge out, bricks, glass things coming that, coming out, and then it collapsed in on itself, and it appeared to just fold down from there, from the very top. Thanks, Don, very much. Um, just looking at that, I don't know why, but I'm... Yeah. When was the last time the United States was attacked in this fashion? It was Pearl Harbor in 1941. Um, from the scene now, uh, there's obviously ma massive casualties. Uh, usually during these things, there's a, a little bit of a high pitch, but basic calm over the police radios among the emergency workers. Um, I can hear them screaming, uh, signal 1013, uh, which is the police code for help. Uh, calling for help at the triage center where other people who are already injured have been injured more um, confirming that the the building has collapsed uh, dozens of officers more civilians are injured and we don't know although I'd have to suggest given the size of that building what progress the evacuation was in um, of the tower that uh, collapsed Yes, uh, Pierre, Pierre Thomas. Uh, one thing I might add is that in recent years, the U.S. government has been preparing for massive attacks, but it's been primarily focused on biological, often mm -hmm. often bombing attacks. One of the things I have not heard discussed at all in government circles is the notion that someone would hijack a plane and perhaps fly it into a building. So one of the questions that I'm sure that will come out of this, if this indeed is a terrorist attack, is what kind of defenses did the U.S. have in place to deal with an event like this? Well, we talked about that even, Pierre, just before you came and joined us, because at the Emergency Management Center, which is just literally in the same complex as the Trade Towers, uh, they talk at great length about their preparations for a biological, a chemical warfare attack, how they closed tunnel. I mean, they've been very efficient, taken it very seriously for many years. I'd be a little surprised if the notion of an airborne attack on a United States target had not been had not been discussed, but the notion of the intelligence services knowing absolutely nothing of what is going on today and saying openly right away they had no warnings whatsoever uh, is and you say something very important if this is a terrorist attack. We just keep saying that in a repeated basis. Um, not, not having any notion whatsoever of what's going on is to be reminded not only of the efficiency of terrorism but it just reminded the efficiency of terrorism. It's, it's, uh, it's ironic. There's a, there's a chilling story. Uh, Lou Shalero of the FBI, um, who was part of the capture of Ramzi Youssef, who was the mastermind of the last well, bomb. Let's go back now to WBAP's Jim Ryan at DFW Airport, where all flights uh, departing have been grounded as they have been nationwide. Jim, you're still seeing some coming in for landings, correct? I just saw one land a couple of minutes ago on the west side of the airport, an American Eagle flight that had been routed in. Uh, I listened to air traffic controllers as I was driving up here. Uh, routing traffic in, nothing is departing here. And it's eerie at this time of the day when the sky would be filled with dozens, literally dozens of aircraft coming and going into this major American airport, major world airport, to see the skies uh, filled with nothing but clouds right now. The airplanes are all parked at the gates uh, right now, certainly at the uh, instruction of air traffic controllers who are not routing anything out right now, Dan. So uh, apparently they've received their marching orders here at DFW Airport, air traffic controllers keeping everything on the ground and uh -oh. getting everything on the ground that's in the area. All right, Jim, I'll let you go to talk to some of the passengers there and see how this is affecting uh, daily business at the airport. Do you see any uh, increased security on the ground at the airport? 
No, it, it was the same coming in. Nothing special. Uh, you come through the uh, through the main gates, either on the north or the south end. Uh, you grab your ticket and head on in. Nothing uh, special that I've seen. I haven't seen any airport DPS cars as yet. Anyway. All right, WBAP's Jim Ryan. Let's rejoin ABC News. Directly into the Pentagon. Uh, that is correct. Looked like a deliberate act. A deliberate act, sir. And can you tell me what direction it came from, Don? It came from the south. It came from the south, up along the river, across the land. It came, it came from the south. Okay, and you, do, did you happen to look at your watch? To, we thought it was just a little bit before 10 o'clock. Well, I was watching ABC News, watching the uh, Twin Tower, uh, and, about, and about the time I saw the plane, I watched it come in very low over the trees, and it just dipped down, came down right over 395, right into the Pentagon. And are you fairly sure that it was what we sometimes describe and recognize as a yes, small I commuter did. plane? Uh, yes, it was. Good, Don. Thank you very much. Appreciate your help. You're Don very Wright, an eyewitness to the crash at the Pentagon. Now, we have had, as I said, reports today. There are hundreds of reports flying around, and so we beg your indulgence on us saying as often as we do, these are reports. They're sometimes unconfirmed. They're sometimes confirmed. We'll try to make it absolutely clear what we absolutely know and what we're uncertain about. There are now reports around of three aircraft having been hijacked today. So we have at least, because we've now had eyewitnesses to three de apparently deliberate uh, aerial assaults involving the aircraft themselves, two on the Trade Towers in New York City and one on the Pentagon itself, just described by Don Wright as a small two-engine commuter plane which came up from the south. And we now believe that three planes were hijacked, two of them from Boston, and one from somewhere else. We are not yet sure uh, precisely what's happened. Uh, News Talk 820 WBAP. It's 908 WBAP's Barbara Schwartz just happened to be in Manhattan on vacation and joins us live from New York City right now. Barbara, what can you tell me about the mood of New Yorkers? Well, I can tell you right now is New Yorkers are normally actually a very polite, uh, close new group of people close-knit group of people, which is how you are when you have to live so close to everybody else, and they all seem to be uh, flooded with the same emotion, which is shock and, and, and disbelief, and I have talked to people who are crying, people who are worried that they had relatives or friends up there in the tower, and, and there is really not much you can say to them. You can try to say, well, it, it's going to be okay, but in fact, that's a lie, because for all you know, those people are dead. Where exactly in the city are you right now? I'm on the Upper West Side. I'm trying to make my way down uh, to uh, the area where the World Trade Center is. I guess that's around First Street or something. It's there near the harbor, and it's a slow go. Uh, of course, uh, traffic is moving fairly normally here. I just wanted to call you first and let you know what I thought the general mood of everybody was. Yeah, the, and you were telling us that the, the, the major cell phone repeater for the entire island of Manhattan is on top of the World Trade sure. Center. Cell phone conversation, uh, an impossibility right now. Very surrealistic. You'll see people walking down the street at the same time, flipping down their cell phones in disgust, like they don't work, they don't work. It's not so much disgust, it's more like we're all in this together. Uh, what you're really getting is... Uh, well, there are more important things to worry about. This is just one of those things that would go along with a terrorist attack. Is it's your cell phones right now? I do see someone now talking on the cell phone, so it could be the company that uh, that we use or whatever. But it's not all working. No. All right, but Barbara, we'll let you we'll let you work your way south a little bit more toward uh, the World Trade Center, and you get back to us. WBAP's Barbara Schwartz live in Manhattan. Let's return to ABC. Uh, other other groups out there with uh, with a, a real or imagined grudge against the United States. Uh, the nature of the event is shocking. The uh, the fact that it's happened is not. Thank you very much, Kyle. Really appreciate it, Kyle Olson. Yeah, one uh, one quick thing. Yeah, go ahead. One quick thing. The accus the suggestions that are floating around out there right now. There's apparently this claim from the uh, from the Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine. Right. Um, very interesting to yes, know. If if this is if this is legitimate, if this is, if this claim stands up, this appears to be okay. the first time this group has targeted Americans. This group has primarily steered away from the more extreme end of the of the violence scale. They focused less on suicide bombings, more on uh, more on on gun attacks and and that sort of thing in the territories against Israelis. Well, if, if it, this it, holds it, up, this is a different this is a very different tactic. Well, if, if it is true, of course, the Democratic Front for Liberation Palestine was very much involved in attacking aircraft in the 1970s, which carried Americans. So certainly, let's accept your notion that it's a recent attack on on Americans. Thank you, Kyle, very much. You bet. Um, uh, as, as Mr. Olson makes clear, there has been at least one claim, and those of us who cover this for a very long period of time are always suspicious of claims. Uh, people who cover international terrorism 
I'm going to interrupt myself. Linda Douglas, our Capitol Hill correspondent, I think is on the phone. And if she's not, she already reports there has been an explosion of some kind at the Capitol. Is Linda Douglas on the telephone? Uh, let's get her on the phone as quickly as we have. She just reported a couple of minutes ago that the leaders of the Congress, uh, Senator Lott, Senator Daschle, the Republican and Democratic leaders in the Senate, had been taken to some un or have been taken to some undisclosed, secure location. Um, our general assumption is that there's no panic involved in this. That somebody in the Capitol building, as someone in the Washington, in the White House, has a book which says that when these things happen, here, Thomas, maybe you can confirm this for me, when these, these things happen, there are certain modalities which you behave, and as you see the hierarchy of the American political establishment, the military establishment being attacked, you want to protect the chain of command. Absolutely. The first thing they try to do is get everyone in secure positions so they can gather information and um, make decisions about what to do next. Uh, one of the things that law enforcement officials had been planning for is the notion of a multi-tiered attack, uh, an attack occurring in multiple places simultaneously. Because one of the things they've talked about is that terrorists want to project more fear, as much fear as possible. And one of the ways you can do it is to have this notion that attacks are happening on multiple fronts. Yeah, well, and, and there's, you've never seen anything like this before in the United States, of course. And, and in fact, not seen anything like this in my record. I've been doing this for 30 some odd years. I don't recall any multitude of attacks. We've had two or three. We've had two suicide bombers within a, in a short period of time in the Middle East. Uh, we had the two embassies uh, in Africa, uh, in Kenya and in Tanzania, the attack two summers ago in the United States. But the notion that uh, the terrorists, that either an organization or organizations, plural, uh, should be able to mount a concerted effort against the United States in this way, causing, in this instance, so many casualties, in the, in the instance of the Trade Tower, certainly so many casualties, is, is going to astound people in the political and military and, and intelligence establishment. Absolutely. The notion that you could have multiple attacks like this, they had been planning for it, they had not seen it. Um, this is a extraordinary escalation, one that they were, they were predicting would happen, but no one would think that it would happen this quickly. Okay. John Miller? I think... Uh, Let me just interrupt. I apologize sure. again. We're now looking at a, a helicopter over the Pentagon. That makes perfect sense this morning. But given the fact that we're all sensitive to the presence of any aircraft, uh, that was a helicopter that just flew across the screen. That is, uh, and as we had one, at least one eyewitness said this was an attack on the Pentagon from the south. He described it quite confidently as resembling a commuter aircraft, which is to say smaller than a small private aircraft and not as large as a commercial jet. It may have been a, a prop jet. Um, it may have been a jet, but it's a smaller version of the jets which so many people in so many middle-sized American cities are now accustomed to see. In terms of the realm of terrorism, this is going to be a real uh, first test, uh, literally by fire, for the Bush administration. You recall, after the embassy bombings in East Africa, uh, the Clinton administration uh, waited about 10 days and launched a missile attack against the camps of Osama bin Laden, who they felt confident at that time they could say was responsible for it, and who has since been charged in it. Uh, in this case, I think this ratchets up. Uh, Excuse me. This is the Pentagon we're looking at now, according to my uh, according to my monitor. And again, it is hard to, to grasp what part of the building. We do not know if they're in the courtyard or outside, but you can see that a fairly considerable amount of damage has been done. We do not know whether these are offices or storage areas. The Pentagon is full of uh, many thousands of people. Uh, We're listening to live coverage of an apparent terrorist attack on the United States of America. Live coverage from ABC News. I'm Jim Hickey in New York, joined by my colleague Karen Chase. Just to recap now, there have been three apparent attacks that we know of uh, two in New York, one at the Pentagon in Washington. Shortly before 9 o'clock Eastern Time this morning, a plane flew into one of the twin towers of the World Trade Center in lower Manhattan and exploded on impact. About 20 to 25 minutes later, as TV cameras uh, from helicopters were rolling, a second aircraft flew into the second twin tower, the South Tower, and it too exploded on impact. About an hour after that, a third plane uh, reportedly flew into the courtyard of the Pentagon, and it too 
exploded on impact. All three buildings are currently on fire. There are untold numbers of casualties. We have no idea how many casualties. We can now add to that list that Jim Hickey is uh, explaining. Uh, there has been a fourth incident, an explosion on Capitol Hill. We are now seeing video of white smoke uh, billowing up from Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C. Completely collapsed upon itself. 110 stories have collapsed into lower Manhattan. There is an incredible amount of smoke and dust covering all or all of lower Manhattan. ABC producer Ruth Davis is in lower Manhattan. Ruth, can you describe the scene for us, please? Hi, Jim. I was, I was down here. I just I had just made my way down to the area of the World Trade Center. There was I could look up and see twisted metal in the building, flames coming out, and I was you know, chatting with the police and the FBI trying to figure out what was going on a bit, and then suddenly there was a huge rumble, and every emergency person there grabbed a civilian and dashed us down the street ahead of a, a huge choking cloud of smoke. It was ash, it was debris, it was smoke, it was fire. We could not see the hands in front of our faces. We were people shouting out to each other to beware of subway entrances so that we didn't fall down the stairs. Uh, we made our way around the block. It seemed like it seemed like quite a long distance, but apparently it was just around the corner and into the lobby of a building here that was open. The lobby was in seconds full of people choking and coughing. Uh, there were some firefighters here with uh, you know in, in more serious straits than most of us. Uh, right now, a lot of these people have cleared out. The smoke and debris have cleared out, but I haven't been outside yet to see what, what the, what's left of the building. How far away are you, Ruth? How, how many blocks away did Just they... Just a few blocks. And this, that was obviously the, what you're describing is the collapse of the, the tower. The collapse of the tower. I'm told by the police that that's what happened. I couldn't see it. And it, you couldn't, in, within seconds, you couldn't see anything. And it is, it's not even clear now, is it? No, it's not. Uh, Ruth, uh, it's, is anything moving at all in that part of New York City? It, it, from the pictures that we are looking at, it appears that there is smoke and debris covering almost all of Lower Manhattan. That's what's happening. There is, it, it's, I mean, it's cleared up enough now. The air is clear enough out here. The air is clear enough here to see what's going on. But, but uh, I, and I have to go. There are some people here in, in, in dire straits who would really need to use this telephone. Okay, we certainly understand. ABC's Ruth Davis reporting live from Lower Manhattan. Now, we said that second building, the South Tower of the World Trade Center, collapsed upon itself. Karen, it didn't appear to me that there was a second or a third explosion. It appeared that just that the structural damage of the building from the plane crashing into the upper levels of the building eventually weakened it so much that it just collapsed. And in fact, Ruth described a rumbling. She did not describe an explosion as the building came down pretty much right over her head almost. And uh, so I, I would think that there would we don't have any, you know, sound evidence of an explosion. And as we say, um, uh, about the time that that was happening, a third plane uh, crashed into the courtyard of the Pentagon in Washington. Uh, that is now on fire. At least the courtyard is, or part of the Pentagon is. We've seen some pictures of uh, casualties being taken away in ambulances. Karen? I have been, uh, just got off the streets of the city uh, on my way to work, and I spoke to a number of people. They are scared. Some were shaking. Some were crying. I saw more than one parent racing back to school to collect their kids. People were watching the sky as they were walking. And though we are dozens of blocks away from where this World Trade Center uh, ex uh, thing is happening, I saw a steady stream of fire trucks and ambulances from the minute I walked out the door to the minute I got here. It's just the entire city is being called in to uh, to rescue what they can or to to respond to this emergency now president bush has called this an apparent terrorist attack on the united states of america and we heard a few moments ago from uh, an expert that um, that was talking to peter jennings that uh, um, a faction known as the uh, democratic front for the liberation of palestine had claimed responsibility for uh, the attacks. However, uh, later word now, a senior f official from the DFLP denies any connection. Um, the uh uh, t uh, the man's name is Taysir Khaled. He's a senior official from this radical Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine. He says he emphasizes that the story on uh, Abu Dhabi TV in the United Arab Emirates is totally incorrect. He claims that the uh, DFLP is against hijacking airplanes. So again, we say, and, and as Peter Jennings correctly says, those of us who have been uh, covering these things for years know that we must wait for quite some time before we know 
precisely who is responsible and who isn't responsible. We do know that uh, at least two of the planes involved in the events this morning were hijacked, according to reports out of Boston. Uh, a third one uh, were not clear at this point where it came from. Once again, two planes crashing into the World Trade Center in New York. The third one uh, into the Pentagon in Washington. We go to Washington now, and uh, ABC's Pam Coulter joining us live. Pat, what, Pam, what can you add? Well, Jim, the nation's capital is ba basically in lockdown right now. Uh, the major buildings of the federal government, the White House, the U.S. Capitol, the State Department, and the Pentagon have all been evacuated. Uh, there are reports of a huge plume of smoke. 922, we're going to leave ABC's continue. Continuing coverage on News Talk 820 WBAP will rejoin it in a moment. But first, let's go to WBAP talk show host Mike Gallagher live in New York City. Good morning, Mike. Where are you? Well, Dan, we are. Uh, we've evacuated the island of Manhattan uh, minutes ago. As you, I know, you've reported here at WBAP, one of the uh, the twin towers of the World Trade Center uh, has literally collapsed. Um, the uh, Empire State Building, where we broadcast the Mike Gallagher show from, to WBAP has been completely evacuated. Almost all of the buildings in Manhattan are being evacuated. And I can tell you, Dan, it's just complete pandemonium. Uh, Manhattan is just, uh, I I've never seen anything like it. Uh, for as long as I've lived here, people running through the streets, police trying to maintain order. Uh, we are getting to our studios here on, on Long Island. And as we go out Long Island towards my home, um, studios in my home where I happen to live, uh, there are uh, just hundreds of uh, ambulances, police cars, emergency vehicles, that are being dispatched to to Manhattan uh, from from uh, the suburbs, obviously Long Island, New Jersey, Connecticut, to try to uh, uh, cope with the incredible loss of life uh, and the injuries. There are reports of people running through the streets in Lower Manhattan severely burned, people with limbs missing. Uh, one, there was a report just a few moments ago of a woman running through uh, the streets without without her arms, uh, but was running. Uh, it's just, it, it's one of the most uh, ghastly things I, I think I've ever seen. We can see the thick plumes of smoke. Mike, I'm, I'm going to have you hold on for just a second, if you would. Let's go to Laura Mingwasser. Laura Mingwasser is with the World Trade Center in Dallas, which is now being evacuated. Laura? We have had no specific threats to the building, but just as a precautionary measure, we are evacuating the building. We're encouraging people to go home. It's a calm situation here. We're just encouraging people to go ahead and and leave the building and go home. Well, you've had no threats and nothing to indicate that uh, this no. World Trade Center is a target? No, not at all. All right, thank you for the update. Laura Mingwasser with the World Trade Center in Dallas, which as a precaution is now being evacuated. Mike, I was sorry to interrupt you there. You, you Were you in the Empire State Building when the first plane hit? We were. We, we actually uh, knew that there was something wrong. We could actually feel some vibration, believe it or not, in the Empire State Building. And uh, this happened at about uh, 10 till 8. Um, a.m. our time, and uh, we, we, uh, the alarms went off in the Empire State Building uh, and uh, a public address announcement to say uh, you are ordered to evacuate the Empire State Building immediately. Uh, we actually had security guards come to our suite of offices and studios because they suspected that we were going to try to stick it out, and of course we were. We weren't going to try to leave, but they ordered us out of the building because, of course, the fear is that one of these hijacked planes uh, would, would set upon the Empire State Building, yeah. another familiar New York City landmark. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not, when I say chaos and pandemonium, I mean, there's, there's certainly all kinds of traffic problems right now in Manhattan and, and, and people walking along the streets, but uh, it's, it's, uh, it's almost kind of an orderly chaos, if you know what I mean. Mm. There, there's certainly not hysteria, but shock, uh, as everybody just kind of stands out on the streets uh, in Manhattan and looks at this, these huge, thick plumes of smoke that continue, as I look at them right now, to come from where at least one of the Twin Towers was, uh, the World Trade Center in, in lower Manhattan. And still visible from where you are in Long Island. I'm looking at it right now. Uh, I'm probably about three miles, uh, two or three miles now from Midtown Manhattan, uh, which is, of course, where our studios are located. Uh, we are uh, in, in snarled in traffic trying to get out to my home, which is about 15 or 20 miles out from Manhattan on Long Island. But... People are getting out of their cars, Dan. Uh, they're, they're stopping their cars to the side of the road. Uh, there are people taking pictures, of course, uh, because this is going to be a, 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 an infamous moment of history that people are never going to forget. People are on top. In fact, right now I'm looking at people on top of a building, a three-story building, standing on top of this building, uh, looking at the, uh, at the fire and the, and, the, and the plumes of smoke. I mean, it almost looks, Dan, like huge uh, uh, clouds, uh, almost storm clouds coming from Manhattan, 
that are drifting because of the uh, the winds and the the, the huge uh, the, the 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 smoke from this devastation going out over, over literally over where we are right now. And so you were evacuated after the second plane hit the second tower, correct? Yes, we were. Well, we were. The alarms were going off at about the time when the plane, the second plane, struck the second tower. So I believe the evacuation was actually underway after the first plane struck. Um, there was, uh, you know, confusion over what had happened the first time, but then I think, uh, as it became apparent, the two planes had struck uh, the, Empire, the, the uh, World Trade Towers. That this, these were deliberate acts of terrorism. Uh, incidentally, right now I'm going by a huge line, miles long, of cars that are trying to that were headed towards Manhattan. Uh, one of the, uh, the the ways to get from Long Island and or actually from Queens and Long Island to Manhattan is something called the Queens Midtown Tunnel. Uh, there must be a line, I'm estimating, four miles long of vehicles that were headed towards Manhattan, and they are not being allowed in Manhattan. No one is being allowed in Manhattan. All of the, uh, all of the, uh, the bus terminal, the Port Authority, everything has been closed, and no one is permitted on the island of Manhattan. So as cars are trying to get towards the Queens Midtown Tunnel, and undoubtedly all of the uh, connectors into Manhattan, the George Washington Bridge, the 59th Street Bridge, the Lincoln Tunnel, the Holland Tunnel, they are being turned away at the entrance. Uh, the, the NYPD and other law enforcement authorities are turning cars away. So there's no way to get to Manhattan right now. It's basically, uh, well, Manhattan has been basically closed. <laughs> Mike, we'll let, you, uh, we'll let you get into your studio and, and, and start your delayed uh, show, and we will uh, talk to you later on today, all right? Okay. Thank you for the update. That is Mike Gallagher, WBAP talk show host, uh, live now on Long Island after leaving his studios at the Empire State Building. Uh, we know of... Four incidents at least, and now perhaps a fifth. We've had two planes hit two twin towers of the World Trade Center in Manhattan. Two fireballs consuming the upper portions of the World Trade Center towers. One of those towers has since completely collapsed into the streets of Manhattan. The second building now appears to be falling. Let's rejoin ABC News. Oh, my God. The second, the second tower. The World Trade Center in New York City no longer exists. It's hard to put it into words, and maybe one doesn't need to. Both towers of the World Trade Center have now collapsed in Manhattan. Thousands of people work on this day, Tuesday have now been attacked and destroyed with thousands of people either in them or in the immediate area adjacent to them. This is, there is simply no way to accurately describe the emotion this evokes in people all over the world friends of the United States and enemies of the United States as well.